cross-section of the A7V tank. One of the most iconic visual elements of the Second World War are German panzers blitzing their way across enemy territory, leaving a trail of death and destruction in their wake. During the First World War, German tanks had a less than auspicious start. Their first attempt at a tank design was the A7V, a clunky metal box on tracks, a far cry from the formidable vehicles a quarter of a century later. In 1916, the Entente powers introduced the first tanks, hoping to break the long stalemate of the Western Front. Though limited, the success of the French and British tanks made it clear to the world that a new method of warfare had begun. Despite this, the German High Command was hesitant in adopting their own armored vehicles, and as late as 1917 were still relying on artillery and especially infantry, utilizing new stormtrooper tactics to break the stalemate. Undeterred by all of this, Germany did have some forward-thinking planners, and in May of 1917, the final prototype of the A7V, designed by Joseph Vollmer, was tested. After some modifications, production began in October, with the first A7Vs arriving at the front in March of 1918. The tank was named the A7V, after Abteilung 7 Verkehrswesen, or General War Department Section 7, Transportation. The initial plan was to produce 100 A7Vs, though only 20 were actually made before the end of hostilities in November 1918. While plans were drawn up for other tank variants, none of these made it to the production line before the war's end, making the A7V the only tank that Germany actually produced. The vehicle was designated the Stumpanzer Kraftwagen, or Assault Armored Motor Vehicle. Crew Compartment The A7V had a much larger crew than its French and British counterparts, usually 18 men. These consisted of an officer, driver, mechanic, mechanic signaler, and 12 or more infantrymen to operate the vehicle's six machine guns. There were also two artillerymen on board to operate and load the cannon at the front. Sometimes they managed to squeeze up to 25 men inside the tank, mainly on the female variant. The inside of the A7V was a simple open space with no compartmentalization to separate the different sections. The engines were located in the center of the tank, with the officer and driver sitting above it, viewing the world through a cupola. Both these men wore asbestos-impregnated suits to protect them against the immense heat generated by the engines. The outside world was observed by small slits that provided limited visibility. The tank would be forced to make frequent stops as the commander reoriented himself. The rest of the crew operated the multiple weapons of the tank, including the main 57mm gun and six machine guns. Conditions in the vehicle were hellish, being extremely hot and cramped, and petrol fumes permeating the atmosphere. Crew members would often ride on the outside of the tank when not in combat to escape the discomfort. Access to the vehicle came from several rectangular hatches along the side of the tank. We'd like to thank our sponsor, World of Tanks, for allowing us to keep the content rolling out. By downloading this game, you're directly supporting our ability to make more videos. Choose from over 800 tanks from across the world. I like to spend my time steamrolling the enemy in a Russian T-44 or sniping from afar in an American Super Hellcat. That's a cool name for a tank. As a historically accurate game, I really appreciate how true to the source the tanks really feel. I feel like a real tank commander as I choose from over 40 arenas to bark my orders from. You can also choose the arena that fits your playstyle, from creeping through the jungle to trundling across desert terrain. Discuss the best tactics for victory with your fellow commanders to craft decisive battle strategies. Join using the code TANKMANIA in the description down below. Not only do you support us, but you get a bunch of goodies too, including Excelsior Tier 5, 250k credits, 7 days of premium access, and 3 rental tanks for 10 battles each. Click below and get ready to roar in your own Tiger 131 today. I'll see you on the battlefield. Weapons The main armament of the male variant A7V was a bow-mounted 57mm field gun. A typical ordnance load consisted of about 180 rounds, divided between high explosive, canister, and standard munitions. Around the outside of the hull were located the six Maxim MG08 7.92x57mm machine guns, two on each side and a pair at the rear of the machine. Each tank would carry around 50 to 60 belts of machine gun ammunition, each belt containing 250 rounds. Though this was the standard armament, this could be adjusted based on circumstances. For example, one tank was modified into a female or all-machine gun variant. 
the 57mm gun replaced by a pair of Maxim machine guns. Each of the weapons was fixed in place, as the idea of a rotating turret had not been thought about by German engineers yet. As a result, each piece was constrained by a limited firing arc, especially the bow-mounted field gun. In order to bring this weapon to bear, the entire tank had to be shuffled about, which was a slow and cumbersome process. Armor The armor of the A7V varied, being around 30 mm thick at the front and 20 mm at the sides. The top and underbelly of the tank was made of the weakest armor, a little over 10 mm, thin enough to be penetrated by fragmentation grenades. The metal was also just regular steel, which was brittle. Even if a hit from enemy fire was deflected, the crew inside would be showered with fragments of metal. Names and Artwork Each A7V was christened by its new crew and was given a unique name. Some were given women's names like Gretchen or Lottie. Others were named after mythological heroes such as Wotan, Hercules, and Siegfried. The only surviving A7V is number 506, named Mephisto, short for Mephistopheles, a demon in Germanic folklore, associated with the character Faust, which incidentally was another named tank, number 503. Before entering battle, the crews would paint artwork on the vehicle. The Mephisto featured a red demon holding a white rhomboid, resembling the profile view of a British tank. Many of the tanks also had a skull and crossbones painted on the bow, but these would be painted over by a black and white cross patty, or German cross. After its capture, Mephisto would be repainted with a crowned British lion with its paw over an A7V. Engine The A7V was propelled by a pair of Daimler-Benz four-cylinder petrol engines located in the center of the vehicle for a combined 200 horsepower performance. Two engines were used since there was no single engine large enough to power what would fit into the limited space of the tank's hull. These propelled the tank at around 9 miles per hour on roadways, though this was reduced to around 3 miles per hour on uneven terrain. Like its contemporaries, the A7V rode on Caterpillar tracks, increasing its traction. One advantage the tank had over the Entente designs was the armored plating of the vehicle, which covered the tracks, reducing their vulnerability to enemy fire. Fuel Tank The tank had a fuel capacity of 500 liters, or 132 gallons. Due to the engine's rapid consumption of fuel, this limited the range of the A7V to 60 kilometers, or 37.3 miles on flat roadways. Dimensions The A7V measured in at 7.34 meters in length, or 24 feet, 3.1 meters or 10 feet wide, and 3.3 meters or just shy of 11 feet in height. They weighed in between 30 and 33 tons, and this variation was due to the manufacturing process, with each tank being made by hand with no standardization, leading to small changes between each vehicle. The boxy design was reminiscent of an armored railway car, though capable of movement under its own power. Chassis and Suspension The A7V was designed around the Holt tractor chassis, including a suspension of vertical springs. Due to the immense weight of the vehicle, the tank had a very low ground clearance, limiting its operations to roadways and flat, even terrain. In spite of the suspension, the ride was a bumpy one, and ropes were suspended on the roof of the tank for the men to grab onto and steady themselves when traveling over difficult ground. A7V in Action the A7V saw limited action during the war. The first operation was in March of 1918. There, the tanks were utilized in the spring offensive at St. Quentin. Two of the vehicles broke down before the engagement started, but the remaining A7Vs managed to help repel a British counterattack. On April 24, 1918, a trio of A7Vs were being used in support of an infantry assault at the Second Battle of villers bretagne when they encountered three British Mark IV tanks, two of which were female variants, which just had machine guns, and a male variant which was equipped with two six-pounder cannons. During the fight, the British female tank's machine guns were totally ineffective against the A7V, and so they withdrew. The male tank remained and scored several hits on an A7V, disabling the vehicle, and its crew were forced to abandon it. This was the end result of the first-ever tank duel in history. 
It was during this action that the Mephisto became trapped in a shell crater. Unable to extract itself, the crew abandoned the tank, which was later recovered by the British. It would eventually be transported to Australia, where it still resides today as a trophy and a museum piece. After its poor performance at villiers Bretagne, German High Command removed the A7V from active service, and the orders for 100 more vehicles were cancelled. The surviving vehicles would see limited service for the remaining months of the war, though the bulk of Germany's armored forces would consist of captured British and French tanks. After the war, most of the remaining tanks would be scrapped. In spite of the A7V's limited success, it wouldn't be the last tank in Germany's arsenal. Later German tank designs would incorporate the lessons learned from the Great War, leading to the development of some of the most famous and effective tanks ever built.